This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 358, an excerpt from the book, Expectation Hangover, Free Yourself from Your Past, Change Your Present, and Get What You Really Want, by Christine Hassler, and I'm Justin Mollick. I'll be your narrator for today, and every day if you're a regular listener. Today's a little different. I have a book excerpt that I'll be reading to you. I'll be reading an entire chapter, actually. The author is Christine Hassler, who was a Hollywood agent, but left her job to pursue a life she could be passionate about. I could definitely relate to that. And now for over a decade, she has been sharing her passion to ease suffering on the planet as a speaker, retreat facilitator, and life coach. You can visit her at expectationhangover.com. And she also has a successful podcast called Over It and On With It. So you can check that out too. And now make sure you listen through to the end because I'm gonna be giving away the copy that I received. So yeah, I'll tell you more about that at the end. And with that, let's hear chapter three from the book as we optimize your life. Expectation Hangover, Free Yourself from Your Past, Change Your Present, and Get What You Really Want by Christine Hassler. Chapter three, what does not work? Quote, numbing the pain for a while will make it worse when you finally feel it. J.K. Rowling. How do you treat expectation hangovers? Well, it takes a lot more than two aspirin, some greasy food, and staying inside with the lights low. There are ways to experience temporary relief from hangover-like symptoms, but for permanent relief, a comprehensive treatment and prevention plan is required. This is quite different from the way most of us face our hangovers, struggling to endure them and looking for something or someone to make us feel better. So before we talk about what does work, we need to talk about what doesn't. The six most commonly used yet ineffective strategies for coping with expectation hangovers are summarized in this chapter. Distraction. An expectation hangover is the elephant in the room that you love to ignore. So instead of truly acknowledging it and facing it head on, you channel all your energy into something else as a way to avoid it. You keep adding things to your to-do list, crowding out any contemplative space in your life. Your life is full of busyness, not fulfillment. You take a vacation, hoping that a tan will rid you of your worries. You dodge conversations or connections with people that may require vulnerability. You find a project or person to obsess about to remove the focus from your own pain, or you immerse yourself in some kind of adventure that will distract you from dealing with what is. Consider, how do you distract yourself from focusing on your expectation hangover? How do you avoid truly dealing with disappointment? Numbing the pain. Instead of diverting the pain of an expectation hangover, you may use some kind of numbing or suppression technique. Common methods of numbing include drinking, eating, working, spending money, watching TV, escaping with drugs, prescription or street, spending time on social media, internet surfing, and over-exercising. Any kind of addictive behavior that keeps you from truly feeling is a form of suppression. Numbing is easy to do because there is no shortage of quick pick-me-ups and distractions. However, numbing is one of the most damaging coping strategies due to the high level of stimulation it involves. In order to maintain a particular level of suppression over time, you have to keep upping the ante and increasing the stimulation. So the longer you suppress by numbing, the more dependent you become on your suppression tool of choice. Consider, what substances or behaviors do you use to numb yourself? When you want to get rid of an unpleasant feeling or thought, what do you crave? Being strong. When something disappointing happens, we often buy into the assumption that we are being tested and that passing the test depends on pushing through and persevering without giving ourselves permission to fully feel. We live in a world where being strong and pretending nothing is bothering us is not only common, but rewarded. Be strong is one of the most common pieces of advice I've heard, and it's one of my least favorite because the implication is we shouldn't feel. We put on a mask trying to look strong on the outside while falling apart on the inside. Being strong is overrated. Pushing away an expectation hangover usually means you're going to be pushing aside some valuable learning and healing. Vulnerability is a powerful tool for healing. Harshness and mental toughness diminish vulnerability. Perseverance is important when leveraging expectation hangovers, but the key is to persevere through your expectation hangover rather than mustering the strength to push it away or jump over it. Consider, have you been told by others or do you tell yourself to be strong when you have an expectation hangover? What are the costs of being strong? What does vulnerability mean to you? Pep talks. We understand the power of positive thinking because our thoughts have energy. However, when we are in the eye of an expectation hangover storm, giving ourselves a pep talk is not always appropriate and can be a form of avoidance. 
I see many people put pressure on themselves to move immediately into reciting positive affirmations, but it does not feel authentic in the midst of disappointment. Don't get me wrong, I'm not advocating negative thinking or indulging in a pity party. What I am saying is that acknowledging what is truly authentic for you is an important part of your healing. Pressuring yourself to think completely positive thoughts will most likely trigger self-judgment because it is an unrealistic expectation. Consider, when experiencing an expectation hangover, are you quick to find a way to make everything okay? Does positive thinking feel sustainable and believable? If you could give yourself permission to acknowledge that you don't like what is happening, would that be a relief? The next best thing. When we don't like what is happening, we often assume that we just need a new set of circumstances, a new job, a new city, a new relationship, a new car, the next best thing. Even if you move to a new city, get a new job, start a new relationship, or invest in a big purchase, that external thing is only a replacement, not a solution, because you're still carrying around all the unresolved internal issues from your expectation hangover. Trying to replace the pain of one thing with the pleasure of something else will not create lasting positive results in your life. Why not? Because what motivated and attracted the new thing was your disappointment and feeling of lacking something. And that's like building a house on sand. It may stand for a while, but sooner or later, the house will sink because it isn't built on a strong foundation. Consider, when have you attempted to treat an expectation hangover by seeking out the next best thing? How did it work out for you? Are you searching for something external to cure your disappointment? Spiritual bypass. When we have an expectation hangover, we sometimes take a spiritual bypass, attempting to jump immediately to the blessings of the situation without doing the work that actually facilitates the kind of learning that creates lasting change in our life. In my experience, we cannot solely meditate, chant, or pray our way out of an expectation hangover. Spiritual practices are key, but we are multidimensional beings. If we attempt to see the silver lining too soon, we may be turning away from the truth of our human experience. Just as our expectation hangovers involve a range of experiences, we have to be willing to address them on a range of levels emotional, mental, and behavioral, as well as spiritual. Consider, are you attempting to repress your negative thoughts immediately looking for the blessing? Do you believe you should not feel bad or even experience guilt for indulging in your feelings? Are you relying on some spiritual practice to cure your expectation hangover? You have probably used at least a few of the above coping strategies at different times, and you're in good company. We all employ these strategies because we are never really taught how to deal with disappointment effectively. Because expectation hangovers don't feel good, we look for an expedient way to ease the discomfort. If you deny, judge, or resist your process and what an expectation hangover is catalyzing within you, you may actually amplify your symptoms. Left untreated, expectation hangovers continue to affect you and influence your thoughts, feelings, decisions, and reactions. Furthermore, you will continue to unconsciously recreate different versions of the same expectation hangover. Quote, Character cannot be developed in ease and quiet. Only through experience of trial and suffering can the soul be strengthened, vision cleared, ambition inspired, and success achieved. Helen Keller. You just listened to chapter three from the book titled Expectation Hangover, Free Yourself from Your Past, Change Your Present, and Get What You Really Want by Christine Hassler. And now I'll be giving away this book to a random person on my weekly email list, this copy that I have right here and that I read from today. So to be entered, you just need to be on my mailing list. That's where I give you an update on what's going on in my life, a little quote, a life tip, and more. It's free to join and a really nice way to show your support for this podcast. You'll be entered to win lots of free books from me, including this one, of course. You can join by entering your email address at oldpodcast.com or you can text the word optimal to the number 44222 but I wanna give this away to someone who's actually active and opens my emails. So make sure you've opened the most recent email I sent you, otherwise I'll raffle it off to someone else. And I think that's fair, right? We want engaged listeners to benefit the most. So again, visit oldpodcast.com and enter your email address there or text the word optimal to the number 44222 and make sure you open the emails I sent you. If you're already on the mailing list, then I sent an email about six days ago. So if you open that, you're good to go. And I'll leave it there for today. Tomorrow we'll hear a post from Leo Babauta of Zen Habits. Stay tuned for that, where your optimal life awaits. Hey, this is Dan from the Optimal Finance Daily Podcast, which is a lot like this show, 
except more focused on personal finance. Justin handpicks the best posts he can find from blogs and authors like Ramit Sethi, Mr. Money Mustache, and more, and I read them to you five days a week. So if you enjoy this podcast, come on over and subscribe to Optimal Finance Daily too. And together, we'll optimize your financial life. You've been listening to Optimal Living Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your optimal life awaits.